Good afternoon. I'm Lisa Allen, the Director of Media Relations for the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, here to introduce you to those who are going to be speaking today and presenting the initial findings of a six-month-long investigation by the Sheriff's Cold Case Posse into the authenticity of the President's birth certificate and his subsequent eligibility to hold the office of President. Addressing you today will be Sheriff Joe Arpaio. The Sheriff will provide a brief synopsis of the investigation's initial findings. Following his opening remarks, Mike Zullo, lead investigator from the Cold Case Posse, will provide far more details on the findings and how investigators came to their conclusions so far. Dr. Jerry Corsi, Jerome Corsi, is also here. He will detail his involvement in the investigation. Also present with us today, but not having any official presentation, is Mara Zabest. She's a computer specialist, author, and lecturer, lecturer of document create, creation and publication. Denise O'Rourke is here. She's one of the Phoenix-based attorneys who worked alongside investigators during the course of the investigation. And Carl Seal, state representative from District 6, is here to briefly discuss his effort to reintroduce legislation pertaining to this particular matter. Once Dr. Corsi finishes his brief remarks, Sheriff O'Pyle will conclude the press conference with his final thoughts on the matter. At this point, we will be open to questions. Most of the questions you need to know will be handled by Mike Zullo or Dr. Corsi. In the materials available to you today is a short introduction on all of those participating in today's press conference. This will be what we call a technically complex press conference, and all of us here have endeavored to make it as easy to comprehend as possible. So to facilitate that goal, we have provided not only a lengthy and detailed press release, but the Posse also put together six short presentations, which you will see today, helping to explain why investigators believe the veracity of the President's birth certificate and selective registration card are highly suspect. Those videos will be, be made available through YouTube later today for public dissemination. And just for full disclosure, this press conference is being streamed live as we speak. Here's Sheriff Arpaio. Good afternoon. You know, in August last year, a, a large group of citizens came uh, to my office from the uh, Surprise Arizona Tea Party, uh, met with me, asked if I would investigate the controversy uh, surrounding uh, President Obama's birth certificate and his ability to serve as the President of the United States. Uh, this group uh, expressed displeasure that no law enforcement agency in the country has ever gone on record indicating that they had either looked into this situation or were willing to do so. I decided to utilize my cold case posse volunteers to investigate uh, the uh, situation at no expense to the taxpayers. I repeat, no expense to the taxpayers. The cold case posse has received much criminal training and investigations from my office and agreed to take on the challenge. The posse reports directly to the office of the elected sheriff for the Arizona Constitution consisting of former police officers, attorneys who worked side by side for six months investigating this matter. I asked them to conduct the investigation with no preconceived ideas. Call it like it is. The critics will say that this investigation is politics. So let me clear that up on one point. I felt that this investigation could clear the President Obama's name and put people's mind at ease. 
it would be beneficial to our country as a whole and to the citizens of Maricopa County, Arizona, who came to me saying they felt their concerns were being ignored. The investigation focuses on the electronic file, you'll see, that was presented as President Obama's long-form birth certificate to the American people and to citizens of Maricopa County by the White House in April of last year. The investigation then also led us to a closer examination of the President's Selective Service registration card. Upon close examination of the evidence, we are prepared today to say we believe probable cause exists indicating that forgery and fraud may have been committed. Not only in President Obama's long form birth certificate, but more disturbing evidence suggests that another fraud may have been committed regarding his selected service registration card. At the very least, I can tell you this. Based on all of the evidence presented and investigated, I cannot, in good faith, report to you that these documents are authentic. My investigators believe that the long-form birth certificate was manufactured electronically and that it did not originate in a paper format as claimed by the White House. How we came to that conclusion will be presented to you by our lead investigator, Mike Zula. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Zula. I am the lead investigator for the Maricopa County Cold Case Posse. I want to give you a little background real quick, and I'm going to move into some videos that were made. I am going to ask for your forgiveness. The videos we're going to show you today are drafts. The final copies failed to arrive this morning. We have some typos. Please excuse the spelling mistakes. Going back to what the sheriff had just informed you, when the sheriff commissioned the Cold Case Posse to look into this matter, the sheriff advised that he had no prior knowledge of this information, didn't know whether or not an offense had been committed, didn't even know whether this was in his jurisdiction or not. Rather than using taxpayer dollars to go on a fishing expedition, the sheriff commissioned the posse. We put together a group of five individuals, three former police officers, all with criminal investigative experiences from other agencies, as well as being trained by the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office General Investigation Division. We also brought in two attorneys so we could get some solid legal input. Going forward, our methodology was to look at this document and validate this document. In other words, all we wanted to do was look at this information, reproduce what was in this document, and then move on. If we could reproduce it, there truly is no issue. Unfortunately, the evidence took us somewhere else. In order to take this complex problem and bring it down to a level that we all can understand it, I'm going to ask you to endure six short videos. The average duration is one and a half minutes with a conclusion video to be about four minutes. Clear difference between the authentic stamp shown on the right and this one. While he's doing that, the sixth video is going to be a video highlighting Mr. Obama's Selective Service card. The Selective Service registration card had been a point of controversy. During our investigation, this information kept surfacing, so we decided to take a look at that as well. That's going to be self-explanatory. 
As far as the birth certificate itself is concerned, the first video you are going to see is what this document should have looked like had it been a paper document to begin with. We do not believe this document that presented on April 27, 2011 by the White House ever existed in paper form. So if you just bear with me, we'll get that video going and we can move on to my next. That's it. What should President Obama's birth certificate have looked like after being scanned into a computer? In order to find out, we stripped away the document's green background, leaving only a black and white <coughs> document. Next, the document was photocopied onto green basket weed safety paper. The document was then scanned into a computer and opened in Adobe Illustrator. Once inside Illustrator, the file is as it should be. It has one layer and one link. As the document is enlarged, we'll notice two more characteristics that confirm it was produced by scanning a paper document into a computer. First, the texture of the paper can be seen underneath the ink. Secondly, the image noise is consistent throughout the document as we scroll from top to bottom. So to recap, we have one layer, or one link, and noise that is consistent throughout the document. So why didn't the birth certificate file released by President Obama behave the same way? Can the anomalies in President Obama's birth certificate be explained by the use of OCR software or perhaps by the fact that the document was optimized prior to being released. We'll explore these possible explanations in a moment, but first we'll take a closer look at President Obama's birth certificate. What I want you to remember about that particular video, because the President's birth certificate released by the White House was an electronic document, we literally had the capability to go into that file and turn off the green safety paper background. Anybody that gets documents anywhere realizes that safety paper is supposed to be a source of comfort, that it is an official document. We had the ability to turn it off. We turned it off and we scanned the President's birth certificate onto a hard copy paper document, a, paper, a safety paper document we actually laid his birth certificate on top of. Now what you're going to see is the differences between what we did and what the file from the White House actually contains. We've already seen what is supposed to happen when a paper document is scanned into a computer and opened in Adobe Illustrator. Now let's use Illustrator to open the PDF file of Obama's long-form birth certificate that was posted on whitehouse.gov on April 27, 2011. At first glance, the document appears to have only one layer. However, a quick glance at the links palette indicates that there are many layers. Nine layers to be exact. As we turn each layer on and off, note the information each contains. As layers 1 and 2 are turned on and off, they appear to contain no information. As we will see later, nothing can be farther from the truth. Keep your eyes on box 20, 22, and the date stamp at the bottom of the page as we click layers 4, 5, and 6 on and off. Layer 7 contains the state registrar stamp, layer 8 most of the type, and layer 9 the green safety paper background. Perhaps most troubling is the way the date stamp and the state registrar stamp at the bottom of the page can be moved around the page in their entirety once they've been selected. This immediately caught the attention of Maricopa County Sheriff's investigators. You'll recall that when a paper document is scanned into a computer, we typically see an even level of noise throughout the document. So, does the PDF file released by the White House pass this test? No, it does not. As you can see as we scroll down the document, 
noise is not evenly distributed as it should be. Those who have attempted to defend the document's authenticity have relied primarily on two theories. One, that the document may have had optical character recognition software applied to it, or that because the document was optimized before being released to the general public, these anomalies are expected. As you will see, both theories are easily debunked. As you, can see, as you can see in this video, we scanned in a controlled document the way a document would happen. If you just simply scan it into the computer, put it into a PDF file, and wanted to upload it onto the internet for viewing. If any one of you brought me your birth certificate, I could scan it into a computer and get that same effect. There would be no links, no layers, nothing able to move on the document. Over the last 10 months with all the controversy, there have been those that tried to explain away these anomalies. And they tried to explain them away by offering up excuses of OCR software or optimization. We tried to control study on using OCR software and optimization, attempting to, again, validate Mr. Obama's birth certificate. These were our results. put forth by those who are trying to defend the authenticity of Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate is that the many anomalies contained in the document are there because optical character recognition, or OCR software, was applied to the document prior to its release by the White House. What is OCR software, and what evidence is there that this software was or was not applied to President Obama's long-form birth certificate before being released by the White House? In order to determine whether or not OCR software had been applied to the file released from the White House, we put it through a three-part test. First, can fonts be recognized in the document? Secondly, can words be searched for in the document? And third, can text be edited in the document? Before we look at Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate, let's take a look at a document that we know has had OCR software applied to it. This document started out as a piece of paper. It was scanned into a computer and then had OCR software applied to it. As we can see, fonts are recognized in the document, so it's passed the first part of our test. Next, we'll see if words can be searched for in the document. Let's try the word constitution. And there it is. The document has now passed the second part of the test. Now we'll see if text within the document can be edited. Indeed, it can. The document has passed all three parts of our test. We can state with 100% certainty this document did have OCR software applied. Now we'll put the file released by the White House through the same three-point test. First, we check to see what fonts were identified. As you can see, no fonts were identified, therefore the document fails the first test. Now we'll search for a word that we know is in the document. It would seem that no matches were found. The document therefore fails the second test. Now we'll see if we can edit text in the document. We can't even highlight text so that it can be edited. The document therefore fails the third test. We can say with 100% certainty that the document was not put through OCR software. If the use of optical character recognition software isn't responsible for the many anomalies in Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate, what about optimization? We'll explore this theory in our next video. With OCR software off the table, this is where this investigation really started to turn for us. We were having difficulty reproducing anomalies in the file released by the White House. 
this really started to become a problem for us. We knew at that point that this document was most likely manufactured. The next excuse that was given up supporting the authenticity of the document was optimization. Optimization in a nutshell is just compressing a file and certain anomalies happen there. We ran optimization tests on the file from the White House on the 27th. Uh, it's a fancy way of saying that a file has been drastically reduced in size. So, was there a good reason for optimizing Barack Obama's birth certificate before posting it on the internet? Given the anticipated number of downloads, yes, a smaller file would be beneficial. Now for the big question. Can optimization explain the many anomalies in Barack Obama's birth certificate? In order to find out, we'll once again perform a little experiment. You'll recall that we took Barack Obama's birth certificate, removed the green background, then photocopied it onto the green basket weave safety paper. Next, we scanned it into a computer. This time, we also optimized the document. We'll now begin a series of comparisons between the control document and the one released by the White House. Let's start with a look at layers. Optimization produced 45 layers in our control document, which is to be expected with a document of this complexity. The document released by the White House had only nine layers. Now let's look at the green safety paper background. As we look at this sped up version of layers in our control document being turned on, you'll note that the green background layer is divided over many, many layers. This is to be expected as a result of the optimization process. The birth certificate released by the White House has 100% of the green background on the ninth and final layer. As you have seen by looking at the control document, this is not an expected result of optimization and implies strongly that the green background layer was created on a computer and inserted behind the other layers as the last step in the computerized document creation process. And now we'll look at the registrar's stamp and the date stamp. The date and the registrar's stamp are contained in part on layer one. I'll lift layer one off of the document so you can see. There you go, part of the date stamp, part of the registrar stamp. Now the date stamp is also contained in part on layer seven and on layer 27. The registrar stamp, in addition to being contained on layer one, is also contained on layer six. Note that both stamps took some of the green background with them. Suffice it to say that the date stamp and the registrar stamp in a document that has been optimized cannot be moved around the document in one piece at will. Now let's look at the certificate of live birth released by the White House. As you can see, both the date stamp and the registrar stamp can be moved anywhere you want in one piece. No green background going with it, lifted cleanly off the document. As we know from our previous example, this is not caused by optimization. Now let's look at the white halo issue. As we look at our control document, we can see that there is no white halo effect caused by optimization. Even as we zoom in and look closely between the letters, we can see that the white halo effect does not exist and therefore cannot be blamed on optimization. As we zoom in on the document released by the White House, we can see the white halo effect throughout the document. And while we do not know what caused this white halo effect, we can state with confidence that it was not caused by optimization. There are numerous ways a white halo effect can be manufactured within Adobe Photoshop. The exact way that this particular effect was manufactured is not important. All that is important is to note that when you scan a document into a computer and optimize it, a white halo effect is not produced. 
In conclusion, we can state that while optimization can result in a later document, the letters found in Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate are very dissimilar to what we'd expect as a result of the optimization process. In short, optimization doesn't explain a single anomaly in Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate. Not a single one. In looking at that video, you'll see that on Mr. Obama's birth certificate, there are approximately eight or nine links and layers. Links and layers are indicative of a document being built, like you would uh, on those transparencies from years ago when you start laying them one on top of the other, and you start to build a picture. That's what that's indicative of. Running it through software for optimization or OCR, you get anywhere from 45 to 150 links and layers all bits and pieces. Mr. Obama's is down to about eight or nine, give or take, on either side. That's an indication of human logic was involved in putting that document together. A computer will not randomly do what it does on Mr. Obama's certificate. The other thing I want you to pay a little close attention to, I believe this is the conclusion of The register stamp and date stamp. At this point, when we realized that you could pick up that stamp and move it, and leave a white background basically outlining all the letters, indicated to us that the green safety paper was the last thing applied to the document. In order to get that effect, the green safety paper would have had to have been applied by a computer. In other words, taking a little swatch and replicating it all over the document. During that process, that green safety paper doesn't fill in where other fonts are. It only fills in black spots. That tells us that whoever did this put the green safety paper on that document last. If you go back to our video in the beginning, it should have been there right on the onset, and it wasn't. The next video I'm going to show you is the conclusion. It is a little lengthy, but we did it for a purpose. These videos are designed. You're going to have to watch them a couple times. This last video will bring it together on the birth certificate. Then I want to move into two other issues, and I won't take up any more of your time. Over the last 10 months, there have been numerous attempts to defend the authenticity of Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate by offering up speculation and conjecture. Unlike those who defend the authenticity of the document, we were not willing to merely speculate or engage in conjecture. Instead, we created our own control document and scanned it into a computer. Many have falsely claimed that optical character recognition software was applied to Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate in an attempt to explain away the document's many problems. You'll recall that because fonts were not recognized in the document, and text could not be successfully searched for or edited in the document, we concluded with 100% certainty that OCR software had not been applied to Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate. Now we'll apply optical character recognition software to Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate. Once we're done, we'll apply the same three-point test to Barack Obama's birth certificate This time, we should see drastically different results. First, we'll look under the Properties tab to see if fonts were recognized. As you can see, they were. Next, we'll see if we can search for a word in the body of the text. We'll choose the word live since we know that it's there. And as you can see, the word was quickly found. Now we'll see if we can edit the word that we found. As you can see, once a document has had OCR software applied to it, you can edit text with ease. Many have also incorrectly suggested that optimization is the panacea for all that ails the long-form birth certificate. But optimization produces layers very different from the layers found in the long-form birth certificate released by Obama. 
The document released by the White House had only nine layers. Our control document had 45 layers after being optimized. All attempts to replicate the layering effect through optimization on the long-form birth certificate or a document of similar complexity have resulted in considerably more than nine layers. In instances where a low number of layers has been produced, the documents being optimized have typically been rather simple in nature, as when author John Woodman used a page from Little Red Riding Hood. In addition to the number of layers being different between the long-form birth certificate released by the White House and our control document, there is another very important difference regarding the layers. As we turn on all 45 layers of our control document, you'll note that there seems to be no rhyme or reason to the organization. Contrast this, if you will, with the long-form birth certificate released by the White House, where layers 4, 5, 6, and 7 all deal exclusively with stamp information. Are we to naively believe that this is the result of a randomized computer optimization process? The fact that the registrar stamp and the April 25th date stamp appeared separately and independently of each other on separate links drew our attention to the fact that they resided on separate independent layers. The fact that the date and registrar stamp were linked and layered in this fashion brings us to the conclusion that they were brought in from unknown sources and placed in the long-form birth certificate document released by Barack Obama to give the appearance of legal certification. Also troubling about the April 25th stamp and the registrar's stamp is the fact that both stamps can be lifted cleanly off the document and moved about the birth certificate in one solid piece. It should be noted that none of the self-proclaimed computer experts claiming to be able to replicate the layers in Obama's long-form birth certificate has been able to replicate this effect with the April 25th date stamp and the registrar's stamp. This document is far too problematic to discuss all of its issues in one press conference. Please note that the issue we are most concerned with is that of the date stamp and the registrar stamp, which appear to have been imported from unknown outside sources. For if the date stamp and the registrar stamp, which are placed on the document to give it authenticity, are fraudulent, then the entire document is fraudulent. The last part of that video is probably the most important. The fact that the registrar stamp and the date stamp giving authenticity of the document is a safety factor. It's to tell the public that this thing is true, it's authentic, and it's official. The fact that that date stamp and register stamp has been imported from an unknown source, linked and layered in onto the document, and can be moved around in its entirety, leaving a white halo, tells us that whoever created this document imported that register stamp and that date stamp, laid it on a white background, and then filled in the green safety paper around it. That is not the way, under any law that I am aware of, you authenticate a document. The document has failed every test we put it through, and I want to also be clear so you understand, this was just not a bunch of ex-cops and lawyers running these tests. We went outside to experts, graphic experts, forensic document examiners, and ran these tests. This is serious. This is very serious. When we realized that that register stamp and that date stamp were imported the way they were, we notified Sheriff Papayo immediately and advised him that we believed we had a forgery. Going forward, other information surfaced regarding allegations of Mr. Obama being born abroad and not in Hawaii. Without having this document to rely on, we were now forced to look into some other issues. There was speculation that he was been born in Kenya. That's been out there forever. We tried to determine, is there a way for us to find out if that's true? 
We all know that every document surrounding Mr. Obama's birth is basically sealed or doesn't exist or, or you know, we're told something about it. We took an unusual step. We knew back in 1960-61, any flight coming in from overseas to Hawaii would have been, I believe, Pan Am or TWA. And we tried to see if there was an opportunity for us to get passenger manifests. There wasn't, obviously. They don't exist any longer. We reached out to the National Archives and asked them the same question. The National Archives responded and informed us that they didn't have manifests, but what they actually did have was microfilm copies of INS records depicting of every individual coming into the country from overseas. We asked them to copy those records from microfilm onto movable microfilm rolls for us. They did. I believe we asked for a 10-year span of time, 685 rolls or, or something to that effect. We asked Mr. Corsi, because he's local in that area, to go down and view those for us. Mr. Corsi went in looking for the month of August 1961, that is the birth date of the president. Not the exact birth date, that is the birth month. Mr. Corsi was examining those records when he got to August 1st, through the month, uh, through the day of August 7th, those records disappeared from the microfilm. And they picked up on August 9th, and then August 8th, and then continued on. We petitioned the archives and asked them why this occurred, if they had any reason, an explanation. To date, they do not. What does that translate to us? We don't know if Stanley Ann Dunham or Mr. Obama has an infant on an airplane coming into the country. We don't know if he was, we don't know if he isn't, and we cannot make that determination. As a result, we still have to entertain information now that he was possibly born abroad. Another issue surfaced, and that would be Mr. Obama's Selective Service Registration Card. There have been uh, months and months of debate over the Selective Service Card. We had to take a look at the Selective Service Card. And what you'll see on one of those diagrams there, you see a blow up of the Selective Service Card. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play this short video to show you what we did and how we came to our determination. I'll expound on it a little bit, and then we'll move forward. <laughs> Was Barack Obama's Selective Service Card really received by the Post Office on July 29, 1980? What exactly is the concern with Barack Obama's Selective Service Registration? We reviewed multiple Selective Service Registration Cards. These are just four examples. Notice the date stamps on all four contain four digits for the year decade marking. This is a copy of the date stamp for Barack Obama's original Selective Service Registration Card that was made available for public review. These photographs illustrate a standard PICA stamp that was used during the 1980s era. The photograph on the upper right shows the PICA stamp compartments and stamps that need to be changed out daily, monthly, and yearly. The picture on the bottom right is an example of a loaded PICA stamp. These five examples are the expected results from the PICA stamp used by the United States Post Office. The two examples on the far left are from the same post office where Barack Obama supposedly turned in his selective service paperwork. Per the United States Post Office, it is policy to use a stamp that contains four digits for the year. The stamp below is Mr. Barack Obama's, and it contains only two digits for the year. Why? This photograph shows a PICA 2008 year stamp and a PICA 80 stamp. Since there are no 1980 PICA year stamps available, the 2008 was cut between the two zeros and inverted. 
This inverted cut stamp creates a similar effect, which closely resembles the one seen in Barack Obama's Selective Service Registration Card. This illustration shows what the 2008 PICA stamp looks like when cut in half and then inverted. In conclusion, as you can see by looking at the side-by-side -side comparison below, there is a clear difference between the authentic stamp shown on the right and Mr. Barack Obama's on the left. Look at the distance between the zero and the innermost circle of the stamp. Look at the distance to the right of the zero and beneath the zero. The reason the numbers 8 and 0 are out of position on Barack Obama's registration card is because when the numbers 08 were cut away from the year 2008, they were not cut squarely. Or perhaps put another way, the person who cut them cut too close to the zero. So when 08 was turned upside down to become 80 and put back into the PICA stamp, it pushed too far to the right. In what is becoming a clear pattern for documents that are essential to the documentation of Obama's life narrative, the Selective Service Card isn't just forged, it's poorly forged. <coughs> this piece of evidence is extremely disturbing, given the fact that there is no logical reason in 1980 for any post office employee to cut a PICA date stamp. It is one solid piece of rubber. It sits in there for a year. In addition, the PICA date stamps, the date, the stamp itself, the stamper itself, is no longer manufactured. It was manufactured until about 1980. However, the inserts are still manufactured. But you can't go on the street and buy them. They come from postal supply houses. The only way we were able to get them was under the venue of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. I personally cut that 2008 stamp in half, put it in, and stamped a white piece of paper. And to my amazement, I replicated what was on Mr. Obama's Selective Service Card. That has severe implications that I, I'm not prepared to speak to you about today. That's troubling. Absent of a birth certificate, absent of a legitimate birth certificate, and if you go back to the very beginning when this started, Sheriff Papayo called it from the very beginning, show me the microfilm. We do not have a single document absent of that birth certificate, which we do not, we do not believe was ever an authenticated document that proves Mr. Obama's birth in Hawaii or anywhere else in the United States for that matter. We have to see some more information. We would like to see hospital records. We would like to see microfilm. And let me emphasize, a single roll of microfilm or a single picture of microfilm is not going to be enough. We would want to forensically examine that roll of microfilm. It can be age tested. We would like to see the documentation that Hawaii has. And we would like cooperation. At this juncture, we've advised Sheriff Arpaio that we believe this should be a full-blown criminal investigation because a fraud has been committed in Maricopa County and the state of Arizona. The document is fake. The representation is therefore a fake. We've asked him for some additional help. We've asked him to provide other resources from the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. That is under review and consideration by him, and I'm sure I'll have that decision for you shortly. At this point, I would like to conclude and ask Mr. Corsi to step up. He has some information for you as well. Thank you. Mr. Corsi just reminded me of another development that happened quite recently, and I do want you all to be aware it's going to be in your press release. We do have, I, we, we do, we have identified a person of interest in the forgery of the birth certificate. We are not prepared to give you any more information than that, but we have identified an individual. That is also under Sheriff Ohio's consideration. Thank you.
Uh, I'm Jerry Corsi, a reporter with WND.com. And uh, first, if you'll permit me, uh, I want to express my personal sadness at the passing of Andrew Breitbart, a fellow reporter. Uh, I would like to express sympathy for Joseph Farah and the entire WND.com staff. Andrew uh, Breitbart was a courageous friend uh, whom we all admired and we uh, greatly miss him. Uh, all, it was very interesting, but um, last night at 5 o'clock, I received a call from Andrew Breitbart's office. They were seeking to interview Sheriff Arpaio. And I arranged an interview with Sheriff Arpaio with Andrew Breitbart, which turns out may have been his last interview. And of course, I was honored to be able to do that. It'll be a, a treasured memory, Sheriff Arpaio. Uh, gave an early interview and discussion of what we're talking about today to Andrew Breitbart uh, because of the deep respect we have for him. Uh, my remarks are going to be short. I want to give you some of the uh, background. I, the, I was invited in August last year with the surprise Arizona Tea Party to give a presentation. The surprise uh, Tea Party had prepared a petition some 250 signatures were obtained to go to see Sheriff Arpaio to, under, to ask him to undertake the investigation. Uh, I came with the Tea Party members to a meeting in Sheriff Arpaio's office. The Sheriff told us that he would consider the request, and a few weeks later he constituted the cold case posse with the authority to begin the investigation. Uh, in October, as the investigation began, I came to Maricopa County and spent a weekend, 18 hours, of sharing information. I brought all of the research I had accumulated on the issues of Barack Obama's birth certificate and eligibility to be president. I can tell you that the investigators were skeptical, uh, not enthusiastic to undertake the investigation, and that I came uh, with a stated determination to find the truth. I was be willing and, and remain willing to have been found wrong by the law enforcement investigation on everything I've researched and written about Barack Obama's birth certificate and his eligibility to be president to this point. Uh, this is not a politically motivated inquiry. It's an inquiry uh, for, for truth. That's why I feel privileged to have participated with a dedicated law enforcement team that has been organized by Sheriff Arpaio and the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the commitment I made to the uh, cold case posse was that my research as I continued to develop it would be first turned over to the posse and not published even at WND.com so as not to compromise the investigation. And I've continued to do that. I want it to be very clear that I was not present in the dozens of interviews to corroborate information, the additional affidavits and searching that the posse has done. I participated only when I could contribute or had something to offer. And I participated in none of the deliberative meetings of the posse uh, and did not seek to do so. It was not part of the decision-making process whatsoever. Uh, the role as a journalist was um, involved that I continued to function as a journalist, but since this had developed in a way where the law enforcement investigation was going to take hold, Joseph Farah, the uh, founder and creator of WND.com, made the editorial decision uh, to allow me to continue to work closely with the Cold Case Posse without compromising either our journalistic integrity or intruding upon the law enforcement investigation. We at WND.com just considered that since a law enforcement group duly constituted is going to be looking at the issue, uh, we were honored to have that level of attention and seriousness, and we committed ourselves to work with the Cold Case Posse, as we will continue to commit in the same capacity to work with Sheriff Arpaio uh, as long as the sheriff invites us to do so. 
So um, I want to thank you very much. I want to make sure everyone had an opportunity uh, to understand from our point of view exactly what has happened. Uh, thank you very much. The information released here today, as the investigators have talked about, is extremely troubling. I stand ready to support Sheriff Joe at the state legislature, as a great many of my colleagues do. Unfortunately, not a lot of them could be here today. We are in session right now, and I'll be leaving shortly to make sure that I get back in time to pass any important votes. I've had bills, as you know, in the former legislature to deal with this issue. I do have a bill pending to deal with this issue, and I trust in light of this new information as it becomes greater and greatly expanded publicly, that it will give new life and new uh, support to the bill I have presented before the legislature currently, which will help not only address some of these concerns in front of us, but future concerns to make sure that in the future we maintain the integrity of our ballot and make sure that any candidate seeking public office meets the criteria that the office they seek and give the power to government to enforce our Constitution. I feel it incumbent upon me not only as a public official to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, as every sworn officer does. I once again commend Sheriff Joe for taking the courage, as he usually does, on tough issues to do the right thing. And I trust, Sheriff Joe, that many of my colleagues will soon join publicly in that, and many of them, I'm sure, will be willing to answer questions from the media. So with that, I do need to depart. I would normally stand ready to answer questions of the media after this. However, I do need to get back to the legislature. So should you wish to contact my office, I'll be happy to comment on this subject. Uh, thank you again, Sheriff Joe. Uh, yes, my uh, office number is 602 926 3018. Thank you very much. God bless America. Yes, thank you. I uh, want to make a couple of closing remarks, if that's possible. Uh, you, you saw the, the uh, information that was presented. We've got a lot of media here. I'm sure uh, some already has. Uh, Hate to say that, uh, inferred that this investigation is pointless, silly, trite. I hope that maybe you have a change of opinion. I'm talking to the media. If these documents are forged, and we believe as a result of the investigation that there is enough probable cause to say they are that a crime has been committed. I am not accusing the President of the United States of any crime. We have to further this investigation to determine uh, who, where, when, and why these documents were, what we feel, forged. My challenge is where to take these findings. I'm an ex-federal guy, 30 years as a top federal uh, law enforcement official. I know a little about the federal government. What other governmental uh, entities uh, have jurisdiction over this matter? I have a little concern with that. I'm considering asking the Hawaii authorities uh, to look into this, but as my investigators and I feel, will they really do it? Will they, will they do an independent investigation, fair, honest, professional? I don't know. So where do I go next? Well, we have a uh, United States Congress. Do I ask for a congressional investigation, bipartisan? We'll have to decide where to go. These are two alleged crimes, forgery and fraud. 
those responsible, whoever they are, should be brought to justice. I don't care who they are. If I'm being criticized for enforcing the law, felonies, there's something wrong. So the president's name is out there, his birth certificate is out there. I want to find out if there is any forgery or fraud. That's my job, and we're going to pursue it. If nothing else comes out of this investigation today, if it all fails, or in the future, what we have learned, I think all of us has really learned something over this. We need, we need a better process to vet people running for president of the United States of America. Nothing else can happen. I'm very, uh, I want to thank my professional Posse, you especially, Mike, and we have uh, other expertise. I think uh, you forgot one thing. We have sworn affidavits to many, many people all over the world on this matter. We're just not picking stuff out of the sky that people have been reading over and over again. This investigation is not over. We're going to continue to do our job. I will continue as the elected sheriff of Maricopa County to do our job and see where it takes us. Thank you, Sheriff. I, I did neglect to tell you about that. We do have sworn, numerous sworn affidavits of people willing to step forward and tell their truth. We have vetted these people. Um, going back to the overseas birth, I am just going to share one with you. I am not going to give you any names. And I apologize for not doing this soon. We have a retired government employee who had a conversation in the 80s with Barack Obama in the front yard of the home of the mother of Bill Ayers. We all know Bill Ayers. During that conversation, the mother of Bill Ayers introduced this government employee to Mr. Obama as a foreign student who they were assisting in getting education for in the United States. That also is around the same time frame that this selective service card was issued, purportedly issued. This individual is willing to come forward. That takes courage. There are too many things in the background that we cannot clear. And what I did tell the sheriff, I could not come to him and say he cleared a background to be an employee of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. There's just too much missing information. We're asking, please fill in the blanks. Help us. This is not where we wanted to go. This is just where it's taking us. And I apologize again for not bringing this to you. Do you have any questions? Sheriff, you're right. saying that uh, that you're not accusing the sheriff or the president himself of uh, any kind of forgery or breaking the law. Yet you are accusing him of basically living a lie. What was that? The... You're not accusing him of a crime, but it appears you're accusing him of living a lie. Oh, I don't know about that. I didn't say that. We, 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 we don't know who the perpetrators are uh, on these documents. Of the crime, exactly. But but he, is, he is, has said over and over again he was born in Hawaii. He is living as the President of our United States, okay. knowing what the laws are. So you're basically okay. saying he's living a lie. Let, let him prove it, then. Show me the microphone. Let him prove it. I'm not accusing him of any lying or crime. I say we have documents that seem to be forged. That's a violation of the law. I don't care who who did that. We're investigating those crimes. But, but he knows what the law is. 
and he is living as our president. So you're basically saying that what he's doing, he's, he's perpetrating a lie by being our president. I didn't say that. Well, what are you saying? Well, you're you're saying you are, in fact, saying that he is serving illegally as the president of the United States. I never said that. Well, if you... I you never mean, said that. I, we're talking about a birth certificate. And he can, he can present other information proving that he was born here. I'm just talking about a birth certificate, possible forgery and fraud. That's all. Well, let me ask you a question, Chair. Mr. Obama has been president for three and a half years. This issue has been uh, debated up, down, sideways. Uh, documents have been out there. At the risk of being a pain in the butt, why should I believe that the sheriff in one county in Arizona has more evidence than folks from 50 states who have been looking at this Clearly, some of them with an, with an eye on, on Does on anybody this. ever come up with this information? Show it to me. Who has come up with this information? No one. Sheriff Joe, in, in light of the findings of the cold case policy investigation, is it not reasonable for Americans to conclude that having fraudulently been mis misrepresented as eligible to be president by whosoever committed that crime? Mr. Solitoro or Obama is even now proceeding in the crimes against the highest law in the commission of the crimes against the highest law of this nation, the crime of conspiracy to to, to and contravening of the Constitution as well as the criminal usurpation of the presidency. Look, I'm a law enforcement guy. Uh, when I uh, started this, uh, I gave it to the Cole Posse. Uh, I just responded to 250 people. They asked me to look at it. Uh, I was hoping probably that we could resolve a lot of these problems with the president and get this issue away, forget it. But it's not my problem they came up with, with this information and sure. documentation. Sure. What do you do with it? Do I just throw it in the wastebasket and forget it? I'm not accusing anyone of anything until we find out who may have committed these alleged crimes over this birth certificate and the Selective Service card. That came to our attention. What do I do? I don't care who it is. Someone did it, if it's false. And I think we have made a pretty good case here. When you say that 50 states have looked at this, okay, show me how far they went. And show me any law enforcement agency that looked into it, Holly. So don't okay. tell Sheriff, me. Sheriff, could I'm you the only sheriff to look into it. Explain why, as an Arizona lawman, um, with ju jurisdiction here in Maricopa County, it falls to you to investigate the birth of a president in Hawaii. Yeah, you want to I got the law here to, to explain it for you. Let me try to put this in, in the proper context for you. The sheriff is the sheriff of Maricopa County. You all know that. And I could use myself as a personal example. I am a resident of Maricopa County. I live in one of the districts that the Maricopa County Sheriff's Service is. The fact that this document is created, and we believe it's created, we are not accusing Mr. Obama of creating this document. I want to make that really clear. We are not doing that. I don't know if the man knows. I don't know anything really about Mr. Obama's involvement, if any, and I don't believe there is, in anything having to do with this. That being said, when the White House took an electronic document after prodding for 10 months, I believe it was Donald Trump who was carrying the torch, calling it a fraud, finally the White House produces a document. But the truth of the matter is, they didn't produce a document. They produced an electronic file. And I don't have the time here to go back and tell you the convoluted story getting to that. But the fact that that document was put up on the website of the White House for distribution to anyone in the country, the world, who wanted to see it, was a representation made to the people of Maricopa County including a press conference where the president himself attests that this is my document proof positive. You fraud one person in Maricopa County with that, you fraud every person in Maricopa County. Subsequently, you fraud every person in the 14 other counties. That incorporates, incorporates the state of Arizona. Keep going. You know where it ends up. It's the whole nation. 
He is looking out on behalf of residents of Maricopa County. The sheriff has told you he would like a congressional investigation. Okay, one, one more question here. Um, could, uh, sheriff Arpa, could you address directly the, um, the issue of whether this is politically motivated, given that you're being investigated by the Justice Department? <laughs> well, we, st <laughs> we started this uh, investigation six months ago before the Justice Department released a 22-page uh, report in a uh, press conference in December. It has nothing to do with politics. I said from the beginning, that I want the truth. I don't care where it falls. In fact, if we could prove that the president, uh, the that birth certificate was real, he was born here, I would be very happy with that. Very happy. But we have obstacles here. What do I do with this? What does politics have to do with it? I don't need this for politics. I guarantee you. Sure. Let me come back to Mr. Zulo's point here. He is saying that the white, that Barack Obama, A, stood up and said, this is my birth certificate, and B, the White House put it up. They're being back to the earlier question. If A and B are true, then C is true that you are, in fact, accusing the, the president of lying and B, the White House, of being engaged in a conspiracy. Since he swore, he said, this is my birth certificate, and you're saying that appears not to be the case. I didn't say that. Once again, we were looking at a birth certificate and seeing if it's a, a legal document. That's all. You're saying, but you're saying it's forged. Let's forced. see what happens from there. But you're saying it's forged. You're uh, saying the White House put a forged birth certificate on the World Wide Web. True? He can answer that a little. After what you've seen here today, you have to come to the conclusion that the document is manufactured. It's got links and it's got layers. And it was put up on the White House website. I'm going to go one step farther for you. We have identified the computer manufacturer, where that document resided 20 minutes before it was uploaded onto the White House website. It was sitting in a computer. It is built, manufactured by layers. If it wasn't, we would have told you. We showed you how it should have looked. The fact that the President of the United States is saying that this is his does not mean we are accusing him of creating this or having any hand in this. We're not. You're jumping to that conclusion. We would like to find the individuals who did it. We would actually like to start with the person who pressed the upload button and work backwards. We'll probably find them. Mr. Zullo, you're, you're seeking transparency, and, yes. and so are we. So in the interest of transparency, can you talk about your political affiliation? Are you a Tea Party member? Are you a Republican? <laughs> no, I, I am a Republican. I am a Republican. I'm not a Tea Party member. And I'll, and I'll give you my funny little story. This was not on my radar screen. This issue was out there. I don't know really at that point really much about it. I didn't know who Jerry Corsi was. The name was familiar. But I, you know, I'm not a political junkie. Um, it'll be a little comical. I was literally sitting in front of my computer eating a bowl of Cheerios when I was asked to come down and see the show. This was not on my radar screen. I was the one who led this investigation trying to validate the document. Attorney O'Rourke is in the audience and she could testify to that. For three, four weeks of our meetings, I kept, I want to validate this thing. I didn't want this to happen, and, and but it did. Sheriff, if I can just ask you a quick question. You say this is not politically motivated. In a county that has as much going on right now with immigration and everything else that you've been at the forefront of, what is your motivation for pursuing this as doggedly as you are? I'll tell you why. It may be corny to you. But one thing that I'm not going to criticize you, it's really interesting. You come up with evidence and all you want, you don't care about all that. You just want to know what motivations are. I just, every time I do an investigation, there must be a motivation. Well, don't you think that's a fair question? Um, no, okay, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer the question. It's very simple. In my heart, I'm an elected sheriff. I serve the four million people in this county. When 250 people come up to me and say, Sheriff, 
You're the chief law enforcement officer. Will you look into it? I'm not going to throw it in the wastebasket and forget. So I did look into it, but so you can't criticize me and say, sure, if you're spending all the taxpayers' money. What did I do? I gave it to my volunteer posse. It didn't cost one penny for what they had come up with. Not one penny. And in a county of 200, uh, 4 million people, 250 people should constitute this much fanfare? Sometimes it takes one person to open up an investigation. <laughs> sheriff, Sheriff, I was you're, Sheriff. Excuse me, your, your office has been accused of mishandling hundreds of sex crimes and overlooking other investigations. Why prioritize this for the cold case policy? I didn't prioritize anything. They're free. What else are you working no, on? Hold on, hold on. Let me... What's that? You're talking about something that occurred five years ago that we took care of, and you keep bringing that up. I, 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 do, I do all different types of investigation. I think this is a pretty important investigation. I think it's really important. <laughs> what I do, that's not fair. Sheriff, did you not have a recent meeting with the Justice Department regarding the investigation of the case of racial profiling and discrimination? I mean, I'm glad that our attention is on the birth certificate. You know, what's that got to do with it? Can you tell us more about that? No, meeting? I'm not. This is, has to do with the President of the United States. I'm not talking about the Justice Department. Why are we Department. not talking about the meeting? Why would I have to? This is what this is for. Have I, have no, I have no problem with the Justice Department. Have you not met recently with them though, regarding that investigation? I'm not going to talk about Sheriff, it. That's Sheriff, another Sheriff, situation. Sheriff, Sheriff, Sheriff. 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 Sheriff, are you sheriff? Um, it's a uh, it's a federal felony to um, create a uh, U.S. Postal Service indicia, and I was wondering if you're going to turn this over to the U.S. Postal investigators who would who would investigate a felony of this nature. So, am I going to turn this over to the federal investigators? No, the <laughs> federal the postal, postal investigators oh, okay. who or investigate. The attorney general, should I turn it over to the attorney general of the United States? Uh, I don't haven't decided where to go with this yet. And that's going to be a big decision that I have to make, but I can't let it die. We have evidence, we went public, I just can't forget it now. So someone is going to have to look at it. So I have to make that decision, and it's a tough decision. Sheriff, you, you say you're not accusing the president of a crime. Who are you accusing? I'm not accusing anybody until we. Well, you said that. a crime is a crime doesn't just happen. Someone I haven't accused anybody. We haven't found that out. Give someone us some time to find someone it out. Someone has to perpetrate the forgery and the fraud, though, right? The what? The forgery and the fraud, which you allege happened on yeah, the birth certificate right. and on okay. the selective service card. Yes. You're not. You've said you're not accusing the president. Who are you? Accusing? I'm not accusing anybody. Well, how does it happen then? Because we're going to find out who did it. We don't have the person yet. I, what do you mean accusing anybody? That's what we're working to, to find out who did it. So what's your we'll next talk step to it. find out who did it? Pardon? What, what are you going to do next to find out who did it? I just said I'm going to have to make a decision whether to have congressional hearings or turn it over to an appropriate law enforcement agency, whether it's in Hawaii or overseas, uh, and make that decision. Sheriff Joe, referencing your comments about the mother's house of Bill Ayers and the comments that your witness has being introduced to uh, the young Obama as a well, We're only going to take a couple more uh, questions. And okay. you can what, what about Occidental, Columbia, and Harvard University? Uh, wouldn't they have a, a duty to release that information if he was attending their uh, schools as a foreign student? To, in, in defense of the Constitution, wouldn't they have a... Part, part of the ongoing discussions with the sheriff is to determine what other documentation we think we could successfully secure. Let, let, me, let me say one thing. You're asking questions. I don't know who you are. I'm not going to criticize you. But you personify what a lot of people are talking about that have been talking about for, what, two, three years, whatever it is. Uh, and I'm staying away from that. I just wanted to get the facts of this situation. We've been doing this investigation. We have a, quite a bit more information. But I'm not going to go public on uh, innuendos or anything else unless we have good evidence, good probable cause. So that's why I'm just sticking with these issues and not answering all the other questions that have been up in the universe, as you all know. I'm just sticking to this. So, Sheriff, sure. we get this over with. 
then we'll decide. Would you say your whole purpose then was just to authenticate the document, not to say where he was born or if he was born here? It was just a, the purpose was to authenticate the document. You're, you're correct on that. We came up with possible crimes. We're going to investigate that. And the crimes happen to be alleged crimes, happen to deal with a birth certificate, a card, an immigration card. But we, during the course of this, naturally come up with much more information on the president's situation. But I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm just sticking with this. I think the media should understand the evidence we have right now and stick with that and then see what happens as we try to solve this case or to find out who did it. Just like any other criminal investigation. I'm just wondering, though, and Mr. Zuller, you can jump in on this, too, if you want to. If this is proven true, fraud and forgery, out of the executive office in one capacity or another, what do you think should happen? Well, I don't know. If you say out of the executive office, we haven't accused anyone. I understand that. The White House, the president, we haven't accused anyone of anything. It doesn't just happen for no reason, though. I mean, you know, none of us are stupid in this room. There must be a reason. If this is true and the president wanted his birth certificate and selective service card forged, and if this is fraud, what do you think should happen? I have no idea. I think you've taken it where no one has ever gone before. I don't know about that. I'm not accusing the president. This is on a cuff. Let's wait and see how we can develop this information on the birth certificate, possible fraud, possible forgery. That's how we came up with this information, which I think is very, very important. We want to get to the bottom of this. I think everybody's asking this question. Mr. President, please come up with some other information where you were born. If this isn't true, the birth certificate, come up with some other information, and then everybody will go away. I'll say I'm sorry I wasted my money on this, but I think, well, at least I stimulated some interest in here, and I think we all win in our country. We don't want this to continue. You know it's been continuing on and on and on. I'd like to think maybe we're doing something to resolve this problem once and for all. I have nothing against the president of the United States. I respect his position. He works hard. I have nothing against him. But this is something that has to be said. What kind of action would you plan to take? What can you do from your bully pulpit as American accountable to address this problem? Right now we want to see if these are forgeries and fraud. We want to find the perpetrators, no matter where those suspects may be. What would be sufficient evidence for you? Just like any other forgery case. What would be sufficient evidence for you for the president to come forward? What else would you like to see him to? I just would like to see the president, if he can come up with some other documentation to put this to rest. What about his birth announcements in the Hawaii newspapers in 1961? The birth announcements and that birth registry, which is just line items. We have information, not information, we have evidence. And we can prove beyond a doubt that not only are foreign births registered in those birth announcements and the line item registrations. We also know and have information, not information, let me correct myself. We also have documented evidence of two adopted individuals that were breathing three years prior were listed as newborn infants. It's not creditable because it doesn't tell us anything. We know a birth took place and maybe a little homework to clear it up. I was actually talking about the newspapers is what I was talking about. That's the newspapers. The way that happens, it happens with the newspapers. There's no distinction as to where someone was born. There's no distinction if they were adopted. They're just listed. It's not creditable information. In 2000, the inspector general issued a report about the rampant problem of birth certificate fraud. And within the opening paragraphs of his report, he states that a birth certificate's intended purpose was only to register the event of a live birth, not anything else. And in and of itself is not creditable information to prove identification or citizenship. 
There has to be other documentation to be considered. That's right from the government. So how did he get it? So how did he get a passport? You know, I mean, somebody had to have some documents to give the man a passport. I'm assuming he has one since he's found. So our investigation is still ongoing, and that's a great question. I just cannot answer it here for you today. And what about the fact that his mother is American? That's a Second Amendment issue, and I'm not here to answer that. Mike, listen, this is continuing. We're not done yet. I want to thank Dr. Corey and everybody, and we're going to do the best we can to resolve this matter. It's not over, and I appreciate you coming. I hope you will look at the proof or look at the documents, stick with that, not all this other politics and everything else. Stick with what we said today, and you make your own judgment as to whether it's credible or not. Mike, can you fill your A4s? Thank you all for coming.